Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Lakeshore Curling Club at beautiful Lure Sackville, Nova Scotia. Bell 5 TV1 proud to present the 2017 AMJ Campbell Nova Scotia Provincial Junior Curling Championships. My name is Dan Hobson alongside John Seitman. Glad to be here. We're glad to call this one. This, of course, has got, you know, lots of uh, playoff aspirations. You win, you punch your way into the playoffs. A very important game between Team Graham Weagle and Team Matthew Manuel. Yeah, it should be a really good game there. Just simply the fact that these two teams have been playing so well all season. And to get to this A final, it really shows that they can get the momentum going into the, the later parts of this event and potentially make it really challenging on any other teams to beat them going toward the Saturday and Sunday portions of this event. Yep, of course you win, you qualify for playoffs, but you know, a lot on the line here for both of these teams. It is a big day and of course, both of these teams standing at 2-0 after two draws, that's draw number three. And uh, Team Weagle will have the hammer here and in number one throwing the blue stones. So of course the three time former provincial champions looking for their fourth here will throw the lead rock getting things underway here as Alec Cameron there for Team Matthew Manuel. As you mentioned, two of the top teams here in the province, number three, they ranked in the Nova Scotia Junior Curling standings and Weagle, number one. And of course, they've won some bond spiels, cash spiels there in the fall that have helped them and really propelled them. When they win those, they get points and it helps them in the standings. And so you've got the team that of course has been together since 2008 and the team that have come together, Weagle here this year. So kind of like you can see like totally opposite directions the team's going. A team that's been together for a while versus a team that just came together this year. Hey, of course, hey, hey, you can say that still, but hey, hey, with Team hey, Weagle, though they've just gotten together this year, they're all really top-notch hey, level curlers who have been on the circuit for a long time, as long as I can re remember. Hey, team Manual still have hey, the fact that they are three-time back-to-back champions, so hey, hey, coming into this, looking for their fourth, they really even though they may have not had as successful a bond spiel circuit this fall compared to Team Weagle, they can certainly show that at this event, each and every year they come to play, and they come to play consistent. Jeffrey Mars first throw goes deep and towards back and out. So that's been a little bit of the trouble that has given some of the teams difficulty so far as they have been a little bit deep early on in games, but they make the adjustment and make the change. So obviously the practice that they had, the pre-competition practice yesterday, things have changed so far. So once again, Al Cameron here out of the team from the Mayflower Curling Club and of course, Graham Wigo out of the Chester Curling Club. Adam's going to try to sweep that just behind the guard, try to get it as buried as possible. Looks, yeah, full Dead buried on. there, perfect. Yeah. Dead on. And that's the thing, that uh, your team, Weagle, you really can't afford to make too many mistakes against the, a veteran team like the uh, Team Manual and uh, go a little deep on that first one. That's uh, So, of course, we're going to introduce the teams as we take a look here. This is, uh, once again, Jeffrey Marr. The second will be Brett Dory. Uh, throwing third stone will be the skip, uh, Graham Weagle, and throwing fourth, Owen Purcell, coached by Anthony Purcell. Once again, as I mentioned, out of the Chester Curling Club. And of course, Matthew Manuel, for some people that have probably tuned in and heard us broadcast before, probably pretty well know the team like the back of the like the back of their hand. But anyway, we'll go through it for those that are new. Alec Cameron, Nick Zaternick, uh, Adam Cox, and Matthew Manuel, coached by Stu Cameron. Nice to see Stu back here. He kind of missed yesterday's action, but he's back here in the crowd here watching this one. Out yeah. of the Mayflower Curling Club. Yes, yeah, so this game is going to be a big one, as, as we said. It, it, one of the main keys to the, the game for Team Weagle, based on what I've seen so far with them, is simply giving a, a Owen Purcell, their fourth, a, a lot of confidence to ma make his shots because a, a, we've come to see the first two games there that he's probably one of the most consistent four stone throwers in this event. If you give him the confidence to make a big shot, he's going to have a pretty high chance of making it. 
Speaking of making it, uh, making that was Zatronik there, removing the blue stone belonging to Weagle. So right now the manual team lying two here in the opening end. So Brett's going to want to put some pressure here on this stone, try to uh, get at least the, some of the rocks in the house moving, get the, maybe get behind cover if possible. It looks like it's going to overcurl a little bit. We'll get both of those moving there. Spills the yellow towards the side of the 12 foot area. Of course, uh, we're going to be live and interactive here during the broadcast. You can reach John at Twitter at John Simon. And for me, it's at DanHops12, and that's uh, D A N H O B S O N 12. And for John, capital J O H N, capital S I T M A N. So, want to find out if anybody's watching overseas, maybe in uh, Tasmania, South Africa, even Florida. Yeah, all over we'd like to be in Florida, but based on the weather, is outside, John. Yeah, it's been it's been a little bit cold here for any of our viewers tuning in from uh, across Canada and around the world. Uh, I believe I heard it was with wind chill going to minus twenty at some points today. It, so it does have an effect on the ice here in the ice shed. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I haven't been outside in a while, so it may have gotten a little bit warmer. So that could. Uh, again be make the ice a little bit different than it was this morning during the 8 a.m. draw. Probably the silliest thing that probably you and I said this morning when we were getting up to leave was oh we can't wait to get to the rink it's cold outside. <laughs> yeah definitely for sure. There's Brad Dory here and the second stones here in the end number one. Mar gives it a little bit of a scrub and they'll get a bit of roll to the other side of the sheet. So Manuel definitely has the advantage here simply in the fact that he has that stone at the, the edge of the 12 foot. If he's able to uh, get this hit and stick uh, with Adams first, uh, he's able to split the house, get a little bit of momentum going, and really put a uh, team Weagle on under some pressure to ma make a good draw behind a, a guard and uh, and really get it just perfect in order to, to maybe even score a single. Satcher Dutton and Cameron giving her the scrub and they'll push the blue towards the back. So once again, manual line two here in in number one. And of course, John, uh, you of course is a lawn bowler. Talk about the similarities with lawn bowling in this sport. A, a lot of it very much com comes in just as sim simply as coming getting clo closest as possible to to the 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 center, in this case the uh, the button, or in uh, lawn bowling the jack. Uh, the main thing that, that uh, as well is simply the ability to play some of the angles and uh, maybe uh, uh, be a little bit creative with some of the strategy that sometimes uh, you see between curling and in bowls. So of course, Randy Furby and John Morris, when you think of those two, what do they have in common? Well, they usually, of course, have been on teams that where the skip has been throwing third rock, and that's the case here as Graham Weagle will throw third stone here for his team. Team Graham Weagle out of the Chester Curling Club and removes the stone. So right now it's lying one here for Manuel still as the shooter couldn't stick around. So Adam's just going to want to put that it back it's pretty much similar position maybe move it a, a little bit to a different spot a bit spot a bit further out just enough to to maybe, maybe make team Weagle think about it a little bit it maybe get in a spot that they're not quite as familiar with and it could force a miss early in the end with the second one from Graham right now Cameron and Zatronik just onlookers hoping that this will dig in it will dig in towards the back will it stick around no it will go deep and all of a sudden looking pretty good here to force Weagle into one all of a sudden that has gone by the wayside a hit and roll and then an overthrow there so of course the change that they had to put Graham throwing third stones uh, uh, though it's a little bit different a bit unconventional, like you've, uh, though you've said there that some of the best in, in the world, like John Morris and Randy Furby, have thrown third for their team. It, it, Graham is probably still one, one of the best the, 
throwers in the province, period, with, uh, at any position. So he's going to execute uh, anywhere you put him on that lineup. So far, not a brush laid to it here by Marn Dory. And they will get a piece of the yellow stone and the shooter will go out as well. That's the danger. Sometimes there's a little bit of a straight path. You get further towards the outside, in case in point. Really didn't need much in terms of sweeping. It was all done by himself there, Weagle, with that shot. So just one yellow stone in play outside of the house. And the one thing like we've seen uh, throughout the uh, the first two draws of play in the guys and also in the girls play is the f fact that simply when you get out, out to some of the, the further out areas it really starts to it can start to almost uh, drift out a little bit more than you think so you and as well with the fact that it's such fast ice like it's about two seconds uh, from one hog line to the other faster than even the uh, some of the best club ice so you really have to be able to trust the sweeping a little bit more, maybe a play the, the line a little bit different than what you you'd normally play. This one looks like it might be light, John. He was quickly up on it, and he's telling his front end here, Zaturnuk and Cameron, to go hard, and they are going hard. They got to get it by here. Oh, just a rub off there. Rub off, will it spill in, and nice bit of work there, and they were pretty well on his hand, right out of his hand, uh, Cameron and Zatronuk, right there. Give them credit for that one, because you knew pretty well, based on the reaction by the skipper there, John, that that was pretty well light as soon as it came right out of his hands, and it did, and they just get enough to get the rub and roll into the eight-foot area to lie one. Yeah, I think Matt noticed that pretty quick, so that uh, the bad thing about it, which is why he was a little bit unhappy with it, was simply just the fact that it, now it gives the chance that either a, a, a Owen can get a roll behind, or if he had wanted if, if he had wanted to completely just a, get out of the end with, with a blank, he could also have played the double. But it does appear like he's going to try to go for the, the hit and roll behind the guard. A couple of other games taking place here in draw number three, day number two here in the men's. On sheet B, we have Team Stefano Sokolik of the Mayflower Curling Club taking on Team Logan Sweeney out of Yarmouth. And on sheet E, it's Team Ryan Abraham out of the Mayflower Curling Club versus Team Ethan Young, also out of, the, out of the Mayflower Curling Club. So if I was a betting man in the game on sheet E, I'm thinking the team from the Mayflower Curling Club is going to win. Yeah, and... It, Captain Obvious, eh? It, it could have been, easily been Team Ryan Abraham in, in this final. Graham Weagle and... A team Abraham had a nail biter of a match this morning on sheet B, where it came down that that Weagle uh, got the win 6-5 in an extra end. But a team Abraham played exceptionally well in, in that match to push it right to an 11 man. You can see Cox and Manuel having a conversation here, so. Of course, to be a successful team, you, we've talked, of course, several broadcasts about like communication and how crucial it is. And the thing is, too, is uh, it's amazing what they could do based knowing that on either sheet beside you, there's other games going on. So it's probably hard to display your message. So you talk about you know communication and non, you know, verbal communication using a lot of hand signals. Very important in a tournament like this because you can hear our microphones pick up at the ice level picking up all kinds of sounds can be a little bit distracting too when you first get out there yeah and a, a lot of the the teams have their own different types of communication systems so to speak and a, they maybe try to get as much communication as they can done when a, they're as close to each other as possible so then they don't have to to communicate when they don't have to i always say have have said when I, I've been skipping that communication's key and hey, if, you, if you're not talking you're n not doing your job so they're definitely doing a good job with that type of thing on the game plan. What is the saying you ain't talking you ain't trying is that what a disorder is? So to speak. Yeah, okay I thought so. So a nice little shot there as they get in behind the yellow guard there. 
So we're into like the four stones here in in number one. As they try to get the come around here. We'll stop in time. And it dig in and it just does. There, you there go. for the single point. Probably a little bit of a nervous, uh, anxious moment here for Owen Purcell there. Thinking, oh, I might have just might have overthrown this and it could have been a steal one, but uh, boy, you talk about a game of inches. Oh, for Case sure. Case point, yeah. And and simply the, just the fact that that uh, he he got put under that much pressure early in this game, uh, being that these are very long ga games compared to what they're used to. Most of these ones on the under-21 circuit generally in their uh, bonds spiel circuit would play usually eight end games uh, as we are qualifying for the New Holland C Canadian Junior Curling Championships. Uh, we're playing under the rules that they have at the national level of 10 ends uh, and 38 minutes of thinking time. So it's a long time. So to get forced to that early is a really big win for Manuel getting the hammer back here in end number two. Just before we were uh, about to go on air, you were talking about the, uh, like, a, what would you say was a, uh, like, a Turner, what would you say it was again? What? About the uh, effect, like, like with the brooms that they, uh, the uh, team Graham Weagle oh, has? Oh, oh the, the, the uh, Graham Weagle, uh, two of his players, uh, uh, some of our viewers may have seen, uh, use a, a corn broom and uh, have a delivery style known as the Tuck, or the Manitoba Tuck. Oh, the uh, Manitoba uh, Tuck. Uh, I uh, thought uh, you said Turner. Okay. I, 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 uh, it's very common in Manitoba, especially with the ones like uh, a lot of people uh, may have seen, like Jeff Stoughton and Mike McEwen have very uh, been on that the high level circuit and have used the talk. Uh, I believe that's Brett and uh, Owen that used that, and uh, they converted over to it a while ago. And boy, they've been extremely effective with it. It. it it may not be as conventional in the junior circuit, but boy, if it if it works, do it because it it has gotten to them them to number one in the, this season, and could potentially book themselves a spot in the playoffs if they can keep it consistent this game. Yeah, we were you were talking about three of the four players eligible for the under 18 provincials in March as well, and have won three under 21 spiels this season it was finalist in one men's cash spiel that they entered and that was at the Bud Light spiel at CFB Halifax Curling Club so yeah they are a fantastic season and results like that prove why you're number one and in the standings in the regular season so it just seems like as you we talked about earlier like a team that they have just formed but you know have are just you're, they're they're no you know newcomers to to curling for sure. So come together and do as well as they have. You know, hats off to them. And uh, you see, one of the things that that uh, they have an, an added factor is a little bit the the connection between the two teams is that actually Brett Dory, who's the second for Team Weagle, uh, used to curl with Adam Cox, who's the third for Team Manual. It so you have that little bit of inside knowledge and everything that they. When teams change in the curling circuit, you sort of get that knowledge passed from one team to the other, and it, how you use it, it, use it as you will. You can get a win depending on if you know how to exploit somebody's weaknesses. Well, that's the thing is that uh, these days it's like all of a sudden a team got together in the past. They would stay together, and it just seemed like when Kathy Overton Clappen left Jennifer Jones, it sort of opened everything up. It's you know basically. Everybody, you know, jumps around and there's been a lot of movement. Sometimes you only see teams stay together for maybe possibly like two or three years, maybe even four, but, you know, oh, so. Oh, well, one of the ones most recently was probably uh, when Kevin Martin's team broke up and it, it, it ended up that uh, Mark Kennedy and Ben Heber went to Kevin Cooey's team and look at them now. They're an Oli Olympic reps for Canada. Yep, and, of course, you talk about the championships. Brent Lang, a two-time junior champion going to the Olympics and of course this is what the teams are playing for is the junior championship in Shawinigan so so far it's been pretty well the, uh, not a lot of rocks to play so far which that generally goes to the style that they, both Graham and Matt play they really played the, the general style of a, a, a hit game and don't put much rock. They don't put much rocks in play. They're 
rely on the other teams really it, being able to ex exploit the, their opponents' weaknesses and as force them into misses uh, on shots that they may not want to play. Like here and now, you, it, though they may not be shot stone, they're second and third and they appear to probably be pretty close to behind cover. Updating things on sheet E. Ethan Young scored two in the first to take a 2-0 lead over Ryan Abraham and that's a battle of the Mayflower Curling Clubs. So far nothing to report there of Sweeney and Sokolik. Mayflower Curling Club versus Yarmouth Curling Club. Nothing yet on the board in that one. Actually looks like just to get a blank there in that one so they just updated the score so that's when still no score between them there on Sheik B. So you're pretty well up to date. Just only three games here in draw number three, day number two here of the 2017 AMJ Campbell Nova Scotia Junior Curling Championships here on Bell 5 TV One. Alongside John Sleitman, my name is Dan Hobson. The Bell 5 TV One crew gladly here. Producer is Chuck Calder. So far... Each team having one stone there in the eight foot area. So Nick's gonna play a hit here on this stone at the eight foot. If they can, can get a little bit of a roll, they, it would be still pretty good. I think that they're probably trying for the roll here. As you can see there, Alec trying to sweep it, but it will get just to the nose. Still sitting second and third, so there's lots of opportunities, especially with that stone behind cover. So there are a little bit more rocks to play. I said one in each. It was two and one, sorry. So trying to do the new math, eh? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So pretty well a little bit of a short, uh, longer conversation than probably you anticipated here for a second end. Yeah, definitely a little bit more thought that they really – they team Weagle were not expecting to have to, to take that single point in the fir first end so they were really trying to put the pressure on early and now a, again 38 minutes of thinking time though it, you, you may think it, it's a lot to, uh, to play 10, en 10 ends uh, based on how they, they use thinking time but they've already used up a lot just in this end alone Kind of pretty well know that they're going to try to maybe quicken that pace up there just before the fifth end break for the save some time because you don't really want to all of a sudden be short on time when you need it towards a stretch where it's most important. Yeah, so now they, that the team Weagle got that hit and roll with, with Graham's first, I believe that was his first, yeah. Big time yeah. double there. Look at that. Just knows it and that first blue one, and they both should go. You see, uh, this is the thing that a lot of people uh, would see that and see that, that it would be pretty tough to to have it move. But because of the, these provincial rocks that we're using for this event are extremely lively, so if you can hit it hard enough, it's going to go. But I, I think that he's trying to maybe uh, just uh, get that a bit more unlocked first and then maybe uh, play for it a little bit more with, with Adam's second. So, yeah, you know that they're close when they go on off like that. And they will remove one of the two blue stones. Still shot rock belonging to Team Weagle. And a quick team decision here. We were talking about how they're you know, using up a lot of time here early. So. Uh, well, I guess uh, with uh, the fact that this end, uh, depending on how you play it, it could be possible that that you may, may have a big end this early. You may want to use it, and then it, you're probably going to have, with these two teams who play a hit-style game, you're going to see a few blank ends later in the game. question is just take when is it time to take that extra few seconds, just be sure of your shot, and then be good with it as a team. Because if... If one person on the team doesn't believe in the shot, it affects everybody. Here's Graham Weagle here as we are into the second end. Team Manual has hammer here. 
So this call intrigues me because it looks as if they're going to try to pl play something uh, to try to get that stone of team manuals out. If you play it just right, you could get get a double if you really play it just perfect. Oh, Look great shot. Great. Graham. Yes, said, it spilled all of it. There was a lot of granite there. Not so much anymore. One blue one belonging to Team Weagle as he pretty well cleared the house. Just with one little blue stone and it's stuck there. The big question here now is how open is that stone of te Team Weagle's at the top of the A's? Hey, hey, depending on hey, how open it is, hey, I believe probably, yeah, it's completely oh, it's, open. So yes. it, it, I would see Adam probably trying to get a a stone, maybe corner frozen, just enough to be a shot stone, and maybe force a hit out of Owen Purcell to be able to just put them under pressure early. But we'll get the hit. Rolls a little bit out onto that corner, sitting shot stone. Yeah, one lonely yellow one belonging right now to Manuel. You were said you were intrigued there by the call there by Weagle. I was also intrigued by the call there by Cox. He had a chance there to spill some out and just decide to you know throw the lightweight and just remove one of the blues. It's and a lot of that is simply yeah, just the ability to be patient with with the the call because it, this early in the game, it, playing that type of tap it, is an, an aggressive way to force the issue without not without being particularly extra aggressive. It, it's a long game, so uh, if they make a, a simple aggressive shot like like that shot that, that you described there, it's going to, to be a bit easier to recover should that have not gone the way that it did. So Owen's going to want to get behind cover here. If he can get around that, that guard just perfect, that would be a really good result. Needs to curl, though. See the rotation. Could he be heavy here on this? Manual ready to pounce. Might dig in and stay towards the back 12. And actually just came to a stop there at the eight. Boy, that'd never die off. Yeah, and the I thought it might have stopped in the 12, but it stopped in the eight. I thought it was going to go further than one anticipated. Uh, you see, the biggest thing there is simply in the ability to uh, execute some what I would call patient sweeping. Is that uh, like like with ice this fast? You re uh, sometimes you really have to just be able to trust that it's going to curl. You just have to take the time to let it break a little bit and then just go when you need to go. Uh, sometimes at the junior level, uh, people tend to jump on it a little bit too early. Fortunately, these two teams have not had that uh, on their team because of their experience that they've ha had over the years. Skip Rocks, fourth Rocks here in, in number two. First of two here for Matthew Manuel. So Matt's going to try to come down onto that stone of Team Weagles. Just gonna need to get by there. Taps that, gets it for two. Great shot. Flying two, but in behind. But of course, as you can see, pretty well the scoring area is still open. Oh, yes, for both teams here so far, so no, you know, real strange pass that they have to take to get towards the scoring area. So as you see, there's a shot that indicates our point. So your team, Graham Weagle, where do you want to put this one here? So that when you set up here for uh, Matthew Manuel's second shot, where do you put it? I think based on, on that it's a bit challenging to really they, I think you, they're trying to get the the hit and the roll if they can get it to roll almost to the edge of the 8 foot just enough to be biting but still in the count that would be a really good result and that is exactly the type of thing there because now it's closer to that guard makes a little bit more pressure and it's in an area that Matt hasn't quite thrown a hit yet in 
so far. So pretty well here for Matthew Manuel. He could hit stick to take a get two points here for in in number two and take a two one lead into number three. But as you say, this is a different path he hasn't probably seen before so far in this game. So there's never a gimme in this sport. Hey, never. Uh, so Matt's going to try play. A, a, Based on this ice, it looks like he's going to try to play like a heavy, almost like a heavy draw type weight, just enough to to come to that stone of Team Weagles at the back of the eight. If they can just get that perfect, where they've probably played a heavy draw in practice before the game, to just get a familiarity with it. Though it's been a little while since practice, I'm sure that they have a little bit of an idea. Looks a bit. Heavy is it gonna go? Last rock here for Team Manual here in, in number two. Gets a piece. Is he gonna stick around? Looks like it has. Will it have will it slow down in time? Yes, it does. There for two. Good execution there for, from Matt. It truly showing that he knows how to make those big shots with the hammer when it's needed the most. So 2-1 manual over Weagle here in end number three. Weagle will have the hammer once again throwing the blue stones. Taking a quick look at some of the other games taking place right now. No, really nothing new to report there on oh. sheet B so far. Sheet B three for team. If yellow is team Sokolik. So three nil lead over Sweeney after two. So just like that, things change. Of course, uh, we also got Team Abraham versus Team Young in the Battle of the Mayflower Curling Clubs here on Sheet E. And uh, right now, of course, uh, Abraham looking pretty good here, sitting two right now. And it's been like that for most of that end. So we'll try to get a score there once they put it up on the board and pass it along to everybody. So back to our feature contest here, Team Weagle versus Team Manuel. Of course, you win, you get a chance to uh, qualify for the playoffs. Both teams coming in at 2-0. and oh. You see, the thing that is so much different uh, for this event compared to what our viewers would see at, like, the Scotties uh, Provincials or the uh, Deloitte Tankard is the format is not like a round robin like we you may see in various other events. It's a triple knockout event that these two teams are, have also now move down to a B division. So they could face off in the B division qualifier too. And it, there is a possibility, and it has happened multiple times recently, especially with Team Manuel and Team with Mary Faye, when she had her domination of the women's circuit, it, that you could win all three qualifiers, not even have to play the playoffs, because you won all three spots. But the winner of the A definitely puts a lot of momentum going into the remainder of the week. This one from Mar looks like it will stop in the back four. Maybe even the back eight is it. Well, just sit towards the back. It is in behind cover. What well, definitely, of course, a stone that's just gonna be ignored right now. Yeah, there's no need to, to get go to that early because it if you put it down there, then probably there's about two or three more freezes that would be made. If you play it above the T-line, it produces a lot more possibility to have some pressure shots for the other team to have to make and, and some more simple shots for yourself. Yeah. As you mentioned, of course, Oakland with three there in the second, so they're into the third. Three nothing here for the team from the Mayflower Curling Club taking on Logan Sweeney at the Yarmouth Curling Club. Logan Sweeney had a pretty good game earlier this morning. He came away with victory to improve his record to one and one. They just finished end number two between uh, Abraham and Young. We'll take a look once they put post the score up and we'll pass it along as soon as we get that information to ones where we stand right here in the third. I have a funny feeling that after those first two ends, it could be game on here. Could probably see lots of granite, lots of stones in play here and probably pretty well maybe the rest of the way. What do you think? It, it really de depends here. It, I, if they don't make 
some of these uh, early ones, and you could probably see Nick start to move some stuff around. Uh, this call will pro as you can see there, Matt called to go for the top eight, which that really is a, a way that tells me that he's trying to play a little bit more aggressive than, than uh, maybe we may have first thought and could put some more rocks in play with the fact that he has Shotstone, I, I believe he has Shotstone buried at the top of the eighth, that if he can get one even closer, that would produce some pressure. Or is he going for the hit? Oh, he is. Probably try to hit that blue and probably try to go in behind cover here. If you can get the, a good roll off of that, that would be a good result either way. Nick Zetternock. Second here for Team Manual. It's the blue, gets a little bit of a roll. Okay, so the blue of Team Weagle at the back of the eight is the shot stone, so you may see some, some granite moving now here from Brett Dory, trying to, to maybe a, move a few of the stones of Team Manual out of play and maybe a, a put a little bit more of his blue up front to guard. Of course, Jeff Marr, 18 years of age, 10-time provincial finalist and winner of four provincial titles. Now it is second, Brett Dory, who's 20 years of age, three-time provincial finalist, has won five under-21 junior spiels so far, and he is currently working as an electrical apprentice. He even looks like an electrician with that hat on. Uh, so if you need any electrical work done, I'm not sure if you live at home, if you live in an apartment building, you need any electrical work, maybe add some you know, extra AC cables <laughs> in your apartment building, maybe. Maybe even set one at Mount St. Vincent there in your classroom. <laughs> oh, for sure. So if you see a guy, if you're going around Mount St. Vincent University and you see a guy with five laptops carrying around, John Seidman there, and he's got plugs in every building there to set them up. <laughs> so it looks like now uh, it's an interesting call here. I didn't quite see what he's calling. He may There's either the option of trying to draw in and get it, a better position in the eight foot, or he could try to run back his own. Looks like he's going pretty fast, so that could. Yeah, he's gonna throw the big weight on this one. Try, okay, there, he's trying to get the stone, the stone at the back of the eight. That one's now a bit more open for him to get to that. You see, well by the guards. Guard and just gets a, a piece and gets the blue on the back as well. Gets you around the horn there. Good results. I say they're going to see some great shot making between both these teams. So now Brett is going to really want to try to. I think he's now going to have to go for the freeze. If you can freeze to the back of the forefoot, it really puts a lot more room for error for the team manual and puts them under pressure going into this these final few stones there as we're now down to Mates Rocks. So far, Purcell and Marr not really laying a brush to this one at all. Now it will start to dig in, but it will sail to the back and come to a stop, back 12. And again, that's what makes the, the freeze such a tough shot is that you the no room for error. Hey, there, there's no room for error, and, and you really have to to be able to that that you have to have almost a way to you have to know know the way to miss properly, because in that case, this st having a stone out of play is not a good good thing, because now it gives the chance for a team a manual to get another well played draw into that four foot area. Weaver's working on it a little bit here. Yeah, Cameron and Zatrinuk. Starting to come over. Seen the curl, usually gets past the hog line and will start to dig in and curl, and that's the case here. But as you see, it will be easily accessible and easily seen by the hack. 
from the hack there, but lying two right now is Team Manual here in in number three. So that pretty much plays into Graham's the traditional style of his, his hitting play. So he's going to be able to hopefully play that double. It's, it may jam on his own at exactly. the back, but it, he could also, just based on how wide his ice is, he could also be trying for to sort of hit and flop over onto the edge of the button, which that would be a great result because it would be behind cover and it would force Manuel to make a play using his guard. Yeah, moments earlier we said that blue stone towards the back and really not going to really come into play, but it could here on this shot here. Graham Weagle for into third rocks here in end number three. And right there, Marin Dory already working on it as soon as he left his hand. So they're going on and off here, just trying to, to get enough to get past that guard. It's coming up, and they're right it's all over right it. On the guard. And they'll push the yellow in, and Manuel there, Johnny on the spot there, pushing it in to help his cause. And there it is, sitting three now. So you see, you see now the, uh, the issue is uh, he's probably going to want either a guard or, or something in the house. It, simply the fact that it, you have to blo block at least one double because there's probably going to be one, one double there either way. So the question is, what do you need to block? And if you, you want to play aggressive enough that you could go in the house and force them to a big shot, where do you put it? To me, I think if you go that way, you put it in the top eight, where he's just placing it now. If you want to play conservative, you're probably going to play for the guard, which you'd probably set it up, up about a foot to a foot and a half on the side of the center line, just blocking that, that draw. Updating sheet E, it was Abraham getting two in the second, so they're tied. Ryan Abraham, Ethan Young, 2-2 two, two is there in, in number three. Still 3-0 three there for Sokolik over Sweeney as they play the third. So far, not a brush laid to a right of the hands there of Cox. Lots of rotation, as you see. Thing is, yes, you've got a lot of rocks in there, but you don't want this too deep there to leave a double. And they might have just uh, given the uh, Weagle team a get out of jail card there. Look at it. Sitting four, two right in the three, right in the four foot area, but two right close to each other. I don't really think that there's much of an issue there because it. You see, we're going to like, try to do the double. It, like the question, it, like that one is extremely tough to, to do. I think he's trying, based on where he's put the broom, he could be trying to use his guard almost to run back because you can't really get access to to the 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 top yellow and a, the other dub doubles a, are a little bit too thin so he may be trying the run back a, which would be a, a more aggressive shot at this point in time but it would be worth it to try to dislodge those two yellow at the, that edge of the forefoot big weight being thrown here by Weagle here and in number three. Go for the run here. They're right, all over, right on it there, the front end, and they're going to hit the guard. Can they spill it back? Yes, they do. Did he hit the other stone to bump it out? Yes, he does. Well, that was nice good. little run back. That was a great result. The, 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 the ideal scenario would have left a, the blue stone frozen, but at least that gives a good result for Team Weagle. Yeah, because he was like facing like pretty well four shot rocks, and now he is the shot stone for the meantime. You see, the, the main problem now for Team Weagle is the fact that Matt is going to see that double that is there and probably be licking his lips because if he could force a, a big shot out of Team Weagle by having to have them draw the forefoot or the button, 
it, it would be a good success to have in an even numbered end for this long of a game. Skips rocks, fourth rocks here, and in number three. Three time provincial champion looking for his fourth, as we mentioned. He's gone to the Junior Curling Championships and has had two straight years of finishing five and four. He would love to go back there and improve on that record. Matthew Manuel of the Mayflower Curling Club. With the nose hit, to lie four. Decision time here for Purcell and Weagle. So the question is now, uh, which double's the easiest? And actually, I kind of see, think that the double on, if I were playing it, it would be probably the, the far, one on the far right trying to get it to roll almost onto the, the stone at the far left. Because if you're able to get that type of a roll, it, it would put, put them behind cover. It, the biggest thing is simply just the fact that there's still so many of those rocks in play. You have to find a way to, to move some granite. There may be a triple there. I don't know if he's thinking that. Based on where he was moving the, the broom there, I don't know if that was the result that he's looking for. You kind of think that maybe the triple would be risky. It's risky, but it's there. And, and honestly, if, if there's anyone in this event you want throwing that triple, it's going to be Owen Purcell because he's certainly playing well enough to make it. Owen Purcell here. Oh, four stone for this Graham Weagle team. And the front end of Marvin Dory. As soon as it was out of his hands, we're going to work. Heads down, brushing. Where's one? And now they'll roll right into the four foot area. And they are shot for the meantime. So honestly, right now, I would try to, if you could get like a, a hit and roll back to that area that you were in, it forces Team Weagle to play on their final stone, the side that they have not have not been playing much this end so far. So it, it would really put them under pressure to make a shot with an area that they have yet to see so far. Yeah, because they try to come down and nose that. They're going to remove one of the yellows, and that's not what they want. They've already pretty well got the... Oh, and they also Graham have Weagle team there, and they have backing too, as you say. And they also have the the fact that the, that stone of Graham Weagle's is guard. They also have a guard there as well, so it would also probably force the Weagle to play an angle raise, which would be a lot higher difficulty of a shot than just a draw. I, I just didn't see that because it wasn't in the camera angle. So still a tough shot either way. It's going to be a big one for Matt to force the issue here. If he could sit four and force to a, an angle raise, that would be a brilliant way to, to start off this game. And as soon as it's out of Matt's hand, Cameron all over there. Zatronuk right now just giving over instructions with his head up. One's got his head down doing the work. The other one has his head up watching things, and they'll remove the blue stone. It'll open things up, and as you say, that will prevent the prevent that raise for the meantime. So it's but you see now the fact that 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 was his last stone. So now you have a, pretty much a, a almost a draw, a draw a draw backing for two, and that would be a three-two lead in the game if made effectively there. So good a, a miss leads to a good result for team. A Weagle, so we'll see if he can make it on this final stone with the hammer. As my broadcast colleague mentioned, last rock here in number three. Graham Weagle force him out of the Chester Curling Club here. Chance here to 4-2. Take a lead and carry it in to end number four. Sweeper's working on it really and hard it looks here. Looks like it could be light. Is it going to have enough gas to get there? And it will come to it. Will it be enough? It looks like it's just enough just there enough. for the deuce. 
Looks like it was just half in the forefoot. So boy, he's had some close calls, close even though calls. a single point there and in number one, it was uh, definitely some you know uh, chewing the fingernail moments for him. So Manuel will have the hammer here and in end number four, and he's trailing three two. Remind everybody the 2018 Scottish begins. Tuesday, January 9th from the Dartmouth Curling Club. Catch all the action here on Bell 5 TV 1, 9 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, it should be a good week of curling in Dartmouth. There's quite a really strong field in it, that competition. Some a young stars coming up in the Nova Scotia circuit and some veterans, a, including, of course, a few people have probably heard a, in the future of our sport in a one of our junior teams, which for the first time in junior team qualifying for that Scotty's Tournament of Hearts, Isabel Laduceur. Hopefully she'll have the chance, if she wins here, she wouldn't have to compete in qualifier because she'd be at nationals, but it's history making for juniors in this province to see a team like Isabel's at the Scotties. Looking forward to seeing it at the Dartmouth Curling Club. I'll, I'll be there. And I, I look forward to being a part of TV1's broadcasts. There should be some good curling all week. And the thing is, is you can be guaranteed already a new provincial champion, Mary Matatal. Didn't get to the final eight, so already there's a great reason there to watch a new provincial champion, champion already, even before First Rock is even thrown. A, and a, a, I can definitely say going into that event, a former junior provincial champion in a junior Canadian champion, uh, Joe Brothers, definitely seems like she'll be the favorite in Dartmouth, but again, as we know, so there is always a team that comes out of nowhere and really it can show that they can win against the best, and there are some strong players to, to do that. Should be a good week of curling, and I, who knows? I can't predict it. It's going to be a tight week in Dartmouth. Alec Cameron, the lead, has been curling for 12 years. He is taking computer game development at the Nova Scotia Community College in Truro. As we take a look at Jeffrey Marr. So we promised it to be a dandy, and it has been a dandy. Now we are going to come out, and they have three brushers here trying to Drager as far as they can, and it will come to a stop. So they have staggered guards there, one for each team outside the house. Weagle's a little bit unhappy with that simply because they wanted to get it in the 12 foot behind cover. Now that they're not uh, in the house, it gives the opportunity that, that uh, Matt is going to call for a hit and roll from Alec to get behind cover, still be in the, in the eight foot, and really put some pressure on this early in the end. Well, it looks like we could be in for an end here to have a lot of rocks in play. And they'll bump the blue one towards the back. Will the yellow stay around just barely biting the back 12? Updating the score from Sheet E. Single point here for Team Ethan Young. So they're now up three to two. Sokolik had got a single point in in number three. So it's four nothing there against Team Sweetie out of the uh, Yarmouth Curling Club. And three two here in our feature presentation here of the 2017 AMJ Campbell Nova Scotia Provincial Curling Championships here on Bell 5 TV 1 alongside John Seitman. My name is Dan Hobson. Glad you could join us. So, you see anybody on Twitter that said hello to you? Any shout outs? Anything on your side? Uh, mine's a little quiet. I haven't seen anything yet, but again, if anybody does want to, to tweet us, if you're friends with me on Facebook, send me a message on Facebook. I'm fine with that too. We'd love to hear from you on this game. If you have any questions about, about the game, about the competition, about the sport of curling, I, I, we'll take anything. I, I, there's lots to talk about and a lot of time left to, for this game. So, so again, I, 
Uh, Dan's Twitter handle is Dan Hobson12. Mine is John Seitman, S I T E M A N. He sent us a, a message, and we'd love to hear from you. And well, basically, we could also be sort of save the cost of a phone call if they need to say hi to somebody overseas. Oh, for sure. We can <laughs> do that. We're in the communications business. Why not? Right now, Yellowstone belonging in the back eight. Here to Team Manual, who has Hammer here in end number four. as we mentioned. A lot of rotation here in this one. So far Purcell and Marr. Just on lookers and this one will come to a stop. We'll freeze that yellow one. Oh yes. The weight is on here for Dory. Probably could have got that a little bit closer if he wanted to but not a bad shot there to do that all by himself. Yeah, definitely a good result there. A, a game that, that froze him, it really produces a lot of difficulties for the team manual to try to get that those unseparated and accessible to potentially hit out and produce a multiple point end. Here's Zick, here's uh, Nick Satchernuk. Taking engineering at Dalhousie University in Halifax. Also competed last year at the AUS Curling Championships and won a silver medal. Of course, Manuel's on that team as well. They were skipped by Robert May, who came up short against a team from Memorial University. And that was a men's. very strong team there out of, I believe that you said out of Dalhousie there. Yeah, they, and they had a strong week there in Truro, coming up just short. It's really neat to see with the fact that, that such a, the overlap between those two events, that a lot of the ones that you would see in AUS curling are also here at this, this event, and, and you'll see a lot of them from around the country that competed in the CIS championship uh, that will uh, be competing at the uh, Canadian Juniors in Shawinigan. Moving along here and in number four. Three two the score. Skip Weagle who throws third stone here for his team. It's a piece of the yellow stone and rolls towards the four foot area. So they're lying too right now. Definitely have the force on here to Manuel has the hammer. is asking uh, Adam here to make a play and Adam Cox uh, skipped Nova Scotia at the 2015 Optimus International Bond Spiel and was a skip of the second place team at the 2016 Nova Scotia Under 21 Provincial Championships and on top of that skipped St. Mary's last year at the AUS Curling Championships. Yeah, Adam for years was actually a, a, in the under-21 circuit, a Matt Manuel's number one opponent, so, so to speak. So uh, when uh, he decided, uh, had that opening uh, to join, uh, once Brian Abraham left to skip his own team, uh, that, that Adam jumped on to play with Team Manuel, and they have truly shown that they can play really well as, as opponents, as teammates rather than opponents, and have put on a really good result having won the provincial title last year and 2-0 it really shows that they're having a good performance this week who knows maybe you could see another here in Lakeshore Adam taking criminology at SMU got a little piece of the rock in the chest enough of it to move the weagle stone back A 
light brushing here by Dory and Marn. Just as soon as they say that, they uh, turn it up a notch. And just a little bit on and off there. Just yeah. half there. Question is, how high is it? It looks like it's a little bit heavier than Let's it say. hopes. Hurt something may possibly be behind T line, but it will stop short or they're coming to the front of the T line, four foot area. It's still a challenge simply just because Weagle of where line three. Simply just because of where that stone is of Team Weagles resting right on top of Team Manuals. It really produces some challenges to try to get that one out. It the the best case scenario I see for Team Manual is is scoring a single. But it's going to be tough to do it still. You have to make some plays to get there. Taking a good look at seeing all kinds of blue shrapnel. Flying to Weagle. While they do that, I'll take a quick look to see if there's any updates going on on sheet B and E to report. It doesn't appear like, oh, oh, uh, I believe, did we say one point for Ethan yep. Young there? Yep, 3-2, mentioned that one, so nothing rare new and still so good for nothing air over Swady on sheet B, so. So we get back to this one. Rocket's on its way here from Team Manual. And he'll try to get rid of those blue stones. Got one push towards the back. The other one will hang around as well. But definitely sort of uh, cleared things up just a little bit for the meantime here. Here in in number four. Still shot rock along to Weagle. The question is now uh, for Team Weagle with Owen Purcell throwing this stone. Is a where behind cover can you get it so that, that it is difficult for Matt Manuel to access and use for his shots. It looks like to me they're going to try to uh, draw behind cover to the top of the 8 foot, try to get behind the guard, so they're really going to have to trust their sweepers that it's going to curl, you just got to take your time, be patient with it, and go for it when you need to go. Zone, zoned in as always. Right, we're into the fourth rocks here. Here in this fourth end. We go and Dory had a brief short conversation. Oh, right there through the gap. And to the back. 12, so they'll take third shot right now. Well, they're going to take a look at it, but... You see, now there's a, an added factor that it, if Matt wants to, he could now play a double and get those two blue out and sit three, so it may... The other stone may jam, but you would still sit third, one, two, three, so it would be a good way to force some pressure on two the four stone thrower Owen Purcell for his final. Little skip here will make his way up the ice here and get ready for his. We're a throw here in the fourth as we we're into fourth and skip rocks. I think he wants a little bit more ice. Of course, that could be the other sheet there, yeah. but I did remember hearing that. I think that that was from sheet E. I think that's Ethan Young was right saying there, that yeah. to Kieran. That's with a microphone that's pretty well pick up all the sounds there, so. So first and two here for Matt. Looks like he's calling for some sweeping there from Nick, trying to get Looks like it's movement there. We'll get the wrong one, I think. Still really good because it ends up almost frozen. 
and it, it could be questionable on which one is second shot it, with the fact that it's the navy blue rings versus the navy blue rock it, it's tough to tell I kind of favor blue for shot stone but again it's there may be a little bit of a hair of a of, of the rings itself that, that could mean that, that the yellow of Matt Manuels could be second. Yeah, it's a, definitely a tough one to call. So there's going to need to be probably draw with backing is probably the best call here for Owen. And that is what they are going to do. Team from the Chester Curling Club, their final stone. Fourth, Owen Purcell with the throw. So far, Mar and Dory with some slight cleaning. <laughs> See if this will come. They want it to sit. And it will sit there. Eight foot area, back eight. So if it does happen, okay, so now it's final stone here for Matt. Hey, all he has to do is pretty much they play a heav heaviest draw with backing onto that that blue stone just thrown, and that would probably get him at least a two. It could be the third. To me, from here, it's close, so, but we may bring out the measure. You never know. We'll have to see how it goes. Matt taking his time a little bit, just focusing on his pre-shot routine. These curlers have been curling for such a long time that they have a way of just getting that same routine every time. Pick up the stone, sort of rub it around, make sure that they get anything, make sure there's no picks or anything. They just say pre-shot routine here. Working hard Final on it there. Final stone here and four. It. Good result there for Matt. So at least a two. A two for sure. They may take a look on the third. I don't know. They're not. They're not looking at at it there. So uh, I feel like that may have been a three. We'll have to see what they put up on the board. The main certainty is that Matt Manuel did score, so Graham Weagle will have the hammer in at number five. Seesaw back and forth. It was promised to be a really good game, and it has really turned out to be that way. As you say, we're going to get verification if it was two or three. And hopefully they'll put that up on the board here, and we'll pass that along. And in the meantime, Ethan Young got two there in the fourth, so it is 5-2 over Ryan Abraham in the Battle of the Mayflower Curling Club it's on sheet E. Yeah, the games on B and E are very important because the losers of those games would face off against Sebastian Laforte and Justin Gray in the, the bottom section of the C div division. It, where if you lose in that division, you are out of the event. It, because, again, a triple knockout event, you've, once you get down there, you've lo lost two and are facing elimination. And both, both games have four teams that don't want to be in that position. Yeah, Logan Sweeney's off the snot. He got two and in number four, so he's getting a little bit closer, 4-2. Sokolit still leading over Sweeney. And it was three. Good eyes there, Mr. Seitman. It was a three there, so it is 5-2. 5-3 five five here as we're into the fifth. And that was a big result there for Matt. N now the fact that you ha are up to, if you could force the, the issue to get Graham to take a single and make it 5-4, then that would really put some pressure on as you would have... If you went back and forth, you'd have hammer in six, eight, and ten. So 
you'd be able to be up with hammer. And that, that's always what you want to have because if you can be up and score with the, the hammer and extend the lead, that could end the game early if you score well. Well, they want to stay away from the big numbers, both of these teams. You pretty well figure once somebody would maybe got more than two, be in trouble, and that's the case now. It is a 5-3 game here at end number five. Weagle has the hammer throwing the blue stones. Two yellow rocks in the house belonging to Manuel. And the throw on its way here by Marr. And why he does that, remind everybody of the 2018 Deloitte Tankard begins Tuesday, January 9th. 2 p.m. from the Dartmouth Curling Club. Catch all the action here on Bell 5 TV 1. You've already confirmed you're going to be there and I'll be there as well. And there's going to be some great teams in that competition. A, of course, a Jamie Murphy looking to get back into the championship. A spot winning the Tankard. He had a Great result, but came out in a tough spot at the Tim Hortons Briar. This year, fortunately, we'll be back in the Tim Hortons Briar because I believe, if I remember correctly, last year we didn't uh, get into that that event. Well, the look here on Nick's face may tell the story on this one. Wasn't too happy. You could sort of see the grimace, the, the, the uh, sick thought of putting your teeth together. Or almost like a Gilbert Godfrey when he talks sort of thing. Wasn't happy with the result of that one. But here's Dory now. This team down by two. Oh, just got our first a little message from one of our viewers from Greenwood, Nova Scotia. A, a loving the, the coverage, a watching there on their 55-inch TV. They also wanted to remind us a little bit there that a Liverpool, Nova Scotia will be hosting the World Juniors in February 2019. I don't remember if the winners for this... Actually, I believe, yeah, the winner for the 2018 event qualifies, I believe, for the following year. So I may be wrong, but it, it would hopefully people will head on out to Liverpool, Nova Scotia in February of 2019 to watch the top juniors from around the world compete for the world title. And I believe that's at Queen, Queen's Place Amara Center where the Canadian juniors was just a few years ago. Very beautiful facility. We were actually there for like a women's hockey provincials a couple of years ago. Very nice facility and a nice town. And they're always really supportive whenever a curling event comes to town. The, the Liverpool Curling Club puts on such a good show. And of course hosting the, the whole world for that event, it will be great to see some of the top juniors coming to our province to compete for the top title in, in the world. So thanks for connecting with us, Julianne, and hope you're enjoying the rest of, the, of this game. Big weight being thrown here by Cox as this fifth end is just moving right along here. And you kind of said teams that sort of hit and peel, you'll have ends that all of a sudden they take a little bit more time, and then you'll have ones where they speed things up. And this one's moving along pretty quickly there after the big three spot there by Manuel in the fourth. And so this we're is definitely the, saving time. And this so is definitely talking. the perfect point to to have some of those blind cans because it, it, uh, once you get to the point where it's like seven, eight, nine, and ten, you're really going to want to have a little bit of extra time just to be absolutely sure of your shots, especially once you get to the ends nine and ten. Graham Weagle. So it must be pretty hard if you're Graham Weagle here and you're thinking, well, how do I get back into the game? I'm down by two, but a team that, you know, is a pretty good peeling team, a pretty good, good heading team, you know, where do you go? Where do you go to hide to try to get yourself back into it? It's, uh, you know, 
pretty solid question to think of. You really have to manufacture hits that uh, are so potentially so difficult that that it forces misses out of it, Matt Manuel and Adam Cox. It, but again, as you said, they're two of the best hitting players in the pro province, not just in, in junior, but in any division. So it's tough to have a miss, and boy. Look at that. You can pick that out unless you pick it up and just decide to throw it out. Get rid of that blue stone and not even touching the yellow. And Adam is so good at those, just being able to pick out any rock and just blast it out of there. It was good results. Well, Matt having a good chuckle there. Looks and like he swallowed a piano there, seeing all <laughs> kinds of pearly whites. Uh, it's good to see the, uh, them having a good time. That, that's what uh, is so fun about junior events, because it, it, you have a little bit of a, a youthful atmosphere that they're still having fun. It can sometimes get so intense, but in the end, they're all friends. They're all having a good time. It's curling. It's fun. Dory with his head down. Marge up and in as well. And they'll send that towards the back eight. Let's see if they could pick this one out. Of course, that was a beautiful shot, shot previously there by Cox. So we're into Skip Rock's fourth rock here in, in five. So he's probably probably going to want to get the hit and roll over as far as he can away from his yellow at the back of the forefoot. Because if you if you stay where it is right right there, it's going to open up a possibility of playing a double, and that would give the an opportunity for Team Weagle to get out of the end. You have the time, so you, you don't want to have to take take a, a single when you don't have to so it would be highly likely that they would try to get out of the end if Matt can't make this. So when they get into the driver's seat you're basically almost playing their game of the appeal and hit hitting game and it's Manuel here with his first in five. Throws the blue and sticks it there to lie to. And that's why I said there that now, though he's sitting two, it does open up the possibility of playing a double to get out of the end. If you try it, you can try it either way because it's open either way. If I were playing it double myself, I would be trying to play it on the intern side, on the left side of your screen, and try to play it that it would be just enough to get both out yet still keep yours in the eight foot. It, makes a little bit more pressure for a shot to be made by Matt on his final and could force a miss. But it appears that they're going to go to the other side and just blast both of them out. Well, why not? You might as well because you're down by two. Or, you might as well. Or are they playing the freeze? That could... That type of ice that they're giving is probably more toward the freeze, which would still be a good result. But I mean, like, if you play the freeze, that eliminates the possibility of the blank and carrying the hammer over. Uh, but as well, if you you do have the last rock, that it, if you make the freeze perfectly, it forces Matt to make a really big shot, and if you don't. It's a deuce, and you're all tied up after five. Yeah. They're going to come up short. That doesn't really help because now it sort of blocks the path. Almost works as a perfect guard there for the team manuals. There you see it. So now it, I definitely agree with the call that Matt just made he's going to try to put one just in the top of the eight foot enough to be in, in between the two the blue of team weagle and his stones at the four foot if you do that it 
prevents the ability to for Team Legal to use that blue as a run pack. And still keeps you sitting three and forces a lot of pressure onto Owen to make a big shot go to, before going into that fifth end break. Stefan Sokolik got three there in the fifth, so they're at the fifth end break. 7-2, and that one on sheet B. Wild came over there on, on B. Lots of multiple point ends. Yeah, a lot of crooked numbers put up on that board there, John. Manual of his last year, vote hammering in number five. Thatcher Nuck and Cameron there. The front end. And they'll put it into the right onto the button there. To sit three for Team Emmanuel. For Team Manual here. On the Mayflower Curling Club. But the question is now, it does appear that it's about half open. That if they did want to try to go for the blank, the triple is there. It's tight. But if you're able to get about to about a third of that far right yellow, you will get all three moving. The team got together quickly here. Their time clock is right now 18.41 and counting down. Both teams right around the 18 minute mark there. Of course, as you say, 38 minutes here for thinking time. And generally, teams take about three and a half minutes of thinking time on average per end. So there's still lots of time to go. They're probably going to take a little bit less time on some ends. Purcell wants a little bit more ice here. Throwing the big weight here. Final stone in number five here for... Graham Weagle Forsum out of the Chester Curling Club. Sweeper's working on it here, trying to get by. Oh. And they wreck their own guard. And it's a steal of three for Manuel. And he's in the driver's seat at 8-5. 8-3. 8-3, oh, eight, eight pardon me, heading into the fifth end break. That was a big result there for team manual and that could really put a lot of pressure and could really make for challenges going into the second half of this game. That yeah, was a uh, do or die shot and it ended up that the worst circumstances came through as you see the three there swiveling back and forth as Brian Refuse cleaned some ice here. We're going to take a break here and we'll be back with six in coverage. Manual over Weagle 8-3. You're watching Bell 5 TV One's coverage of the 2017 AMJ Campbell Nova Scotia Provincial Curling Championships. Shot your first one. Thanks. Great shot.
Alongside our producer, Chuck Calder and John Seidman, my name is Dan Hobson. Welcome back for the second half of the coverage here for the 2017 AMJ Campbell Nova Scotia Junior Curling Championships here on Bell 5 TV1. The scoreboard doesn't lie, John. Three in the fourth there for Manuel, and then Steele three in the fifth. Has him up eight to three here in the sixth, and that's pretty well the story. They were going back and forth and close, but... That big three there by Manuel, proven why, you know, all of a sudden, provincial championship experience here coming to show its uh, true colors right now after getting up three and the steal three. Yeah, for sure. And definitely, he's really showing that no matter where he was on the Bondspiel circuit, that in provincial play, he has excelled. And if I remember correctly, if I, I took a little look just before this game, it, Manuel and Weagle have played four times. Uh, oh, okay, three times in provincial junior championship play, and Manuel has won all three of them in pretty relatively lopsided games: nine, one, eight, four, and the closest one being five, three during the 2015 event. So we'll see if history is repeating itself here in Lakeshore this afternoon. And the deja vu all over again sort of scenario right now. But definitely, you know, coming in with a lot of momentum, having a great season, winning three spiels and, you know, doing well. And, of course, those spiels help you with championship points to determine your seedings. And to see this like it is, and you can pretty well see the conservative play up by five. Manuel says, just throw it away, boys, and that's exactly what they do. The less, less rocks in play, the better it is. Yep, for sure. You just a, Any rock in play is a, a good thing for the opposition when you're down by the, this number, so you really have to keep it as minimal as possible. We have seen so far this tournament that there are a lot of these games that people have been able to come back through getting a big end and stealing and stealing and stealing it, like Callie Moore almost did during the past draw but it's challenging to, to do so we'll see if Weagle would be able to do what a few people have yet to do so far this event and come back from a big deficit to win updates on sheet B still 
7-2 Sokolik over Sweeney there. Sweeney, of course, with a win this morning to go 1-1. One one, in danger of going 1-2. Got some work cut out for him. Single point here for Ryan Abraham in, in number five. So it's 5-3, so that one's a tight one. This one sort of looked to be probably what we thought would be a close one, but a couple of ends has really sort of put this one almost really, you can pretty well say maybe put it into, into the uh, win column here for Manuel. But, of course, stranger things have happened. But, I mean, if you look at the logistics, being down by five and curling, that's... Uh, the numbers don't look very well. The biggest thing right now here is a, they're going to have to get at least two. It, which, when Manuel starts getting into that hit game, he really is tough to score multiple points on. He does put that into the 12 foot, but again, Manuel being the, the player that he is, he's going to call for Nick to play a, a peel and take that stone out. Really, this game has been, it, though it may look a bit lopsided because of having that 5-3 scoreline before the, the three-ender steal, it really has been a tight matchup between the two teams. One end really was the main factor, the TV1 game changer, so to speak. I like that. I think they used that a few years ago when I was working with Scott Squires on the Scotties, and it just stuck. I, I just thought I'd bring it back from the the, the good old treasure chest to broadcast a lingo. He's got to be really careful here so that he doesn't set up a, any double peels. It really would create a lot of opportunities for Manuel to hit easier so he's going to take a play on that stone anything that has a blue handle on it they want to remove and they'll put it in the hands of Adam Cox here the team third gets a piece of the stone and the shooter goes as well Boy, when you have that in your back pocket, boy, you are just, you're just a tough team to beat when you could generate your offense and then still have the ability to peel like that, making it really tough for teams to, you know, try to get back and, you know, make a game of it. And that's truly been the, the calling card of the Matt Manuel rink of being able to uh, get a lead on, on you early and then use the hit game to shut you down, so... They, they're really, I, I guess it, in baseball it's like having somebody who can keep hitting the long ball yet still keep it, it catching the, the fly balls to shut you down in, on defense and being able to make the big shots early and shut you down with the peel has been what this similar thing here in this game that has resulted in the 8-3 to three lead. Of course, at the uh, Junior Canadian Nationals, it's been a, quite a dry spell here for the, uh, a team from Nova Scotia to win the whole national championship. They have to go all the way back to 1993. And of course, for the women, it was 2016. Yeah, they, unfortunately, the Nova Scotian Junior boys have had a little bit of struggles trying to get back to that top of the podium. It, not that they haven't been too far off. They've had some pretty good performances from Matt and from a few others, it, there's too many to count. Most recently, there's been some really good ones. Ian Fitzner LeBlanc was one of the ones that placed pretty high up, if I remember correctly, a former junior champion who moved up to the men's circuit and played really well. Skipped Nova Scotia in the 2010 Tim Hortons Briar. That was Sean Adams' team in 1993 at... Uh Last time won a national championship representing Team Nova Scotia. And then uh, on the women's side, there was four times that Nova Scotia's won the junior women's title. 
the two most recent ones happened to also make it up to the top of the podium in the world championships with a silver medal from Jill Mauser, now Jill Brothers, and of course the big gold medal win for Mary Fay. Graham Weagle here in in number six. Just basically trying to get anything. Does have a corner guard here along the side that he wants to get in behind the front end, working hard here of. Dory and Marr. So it appears that based on that line, he's probably seeing it pretty much wide. Yeah, yeah it's, it's wide it's open. It's wide open, so again, he's going to be pl playing his peels again and just keeping it simple has really been the key to shutting down the offense that Team Weagle's trying to put together. You talked about it earlier about the pre shot routine, just briefly taking deep breaths and taking his time. Knowing that he's in full control gives you the extra little bit of confidence and making sure that you don't want to rush your shots as we're into the four stones and skip stones here in, in number six. Got Cameron the there. Good looks shot. at the blue and the shooter goes as well. So line one once again is manual here in the six. We go in Purcell. We'll have a brief chit chat. I will put a quick little plug as the uh, Owen goes down to throw it. it there is going to be some great curling all week, and if you're in the area, we'd love to see you here at the Lakeshore Curling Club, a, a part of the Sackville Sports Stadium in Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia. There's been great crowds so far th this week, both here in the clubhouse, and we do have some brave souls out there on the bleachers on Sheet A in the ice shed. So how cold was it? You were out there earlier. Uh, it it was it was cold. I did not spend too much time out there, but I really admire the folks that are able to stay out there for a full ten or eleven ends. If I had a stopwatch, I'd see how long you really were out there, but I didn't have one. Couldn't find one at about the time. Si about six rocks, probably. Yeah, so six rocks, ooh, about three or five minutes. Yeah. I guess I, I guess I get so used to the broadcast position where we're a little bit warmer than the, the folks outside. But nonetheless, beautiful seats. Yeah, the like Lakeshore you. Curling Club has put on such a good show for us, and we appreciate all the volunteers uh, who have put on such a great event, and they keep putting on such good shows for junior curling in Nova Scotia each and every time they come to Lakeshore. Karen Skiffington and the team here have been putting in many hours to... He get everything all put together, put the ice just perfect, and give the players the the skill, the stuff they need to be able to be at their best and ready to perform once they hit the ice and start playing their rocks. Last rock without hammer here, and in number six for Team Manual. Pretty well want to keep the house clean as much as possible. Going to be by the guard and we'll hit the blue one and get a nice roll roll towards the four foot area to lie two. So pretty much now it forces the issue that he pretty much has to take a single. He, he, even if you tried to play the double, you, you really wouldn't be able to have it leave. So you're going to have to take that. And that is what Graham is calling for. Just hit on the nose for a single in this six end. So when you have the big lead like you do, of course, you're pretty well in command and can pretty well control the tempo, and that's the case in point here. 
as we see the final rock here being thrown here by Anthony Purcell here in in number six. And as my broadcast colleague mentioned, a hit and stick for a single point. And does there. So make it 8-4. And Manuel will have the hammer here at hit number seven. Anybody you want to give shout outs to right now or is she pretty quiet on your side? Uh, well, just checking there. There was a message from my mother that she may have been unable to, to see it, the, the broadcast, but again, just checking with her to see if she's on the right sheet there. Nothing else that I've seen so far, but again, if anybody wants to send us a message, they, we're on Twitter. They, at John Seitman and at Dan Hobson 12. Give us a message. Send us your questions, comments, where you're tuning in from. We'd love to hear from you. So as you see, Emmanuel Weagle, Emmanuel up by four as we're here in the seventh. Having the hammer. And I guess you could say that the fourth and the fifth inch was pretty well. Started putting nails into coffins here for T. Wiggle as, as Manuel scored three in the fourth and then a steal of three by Manuel in the fifth. And uh, pretty well have been the difference makers. And as you mentioned earlier, earlier in the broadcast, that it, you know the teams were pretty well tight and went back and forth. And, that's the thing, you make one mistake in this caliber and it costs you. Yeah, definitely. These two teams, they're so tight that even the least bit of an error is something that, that will cost you big opportunities in the match. And it's really put Team Manual up in front. Yellowstone just outside the 12 foot area, close to the T line. July 1, manual once again. Our wants uh, the broom to be adjusted there by Graham Weagle. And you can see that they're going to time this as uh, Purcell turns on the stopwatch. See if the speed, as you one of the things we get into the closer is, is that the sliding path, all of a sudden the pebble starts to wear down, so things may start to speed up. And they're basically kiss their own guard there, and the guard moves to the center line here. So two blue stones belonging to Weagle, well outside, and the yellow one by Manuel in the 12-foot area. I'm going to try to do a stopwatch on this to see how how it's going from here based on what we can see. So. So that's about 16 seconds from hog line to hog line. And the, the average club ice is about 14. So it's still running really slick. Comes to a stop there, a biter there in the 12. Right now, Manuel lies too. So it's going to be very important here for Graham to get one buried behind those stones that he has there. Really, he can ignore those stones of Team Manuel at the edge of the 12 foot because if he can get that stone put behind his just perfect, it would really put some pressure to have to for a Team Manuel to have to remove some of the guards up front. Marn Purcell here trying to drag the Brett Dory throw here as far as they can. Gonna get by those two. And now Weagle will jump in. Three men as they will try to get this deep and buried. And success. I would say so. Buried there. Top eight. Yeah, really good result there. Now it will really force a man to have to 
call for Nick to do it, probably a peel at, of at least one of them. It, he can get both of them moving, which appears to be what he's going to be go calling for. I haven't seen as much of the games on Sheet D, but on C it has appeared that the, when you play the bigger wave, it tends to drift out a slight little bit. That's why he's pretty much putting it almost where inside of where he wants the, the rock to hit. 5-4, Ethan Young over Ryan Abraham as Abraham got a single point there in the six. So that's oh, been still a tight one. That's the sheet, of course, right next to the one that we're covering. Nothing new to report on sheet B, still 7-2. Sokolik over Sweeney. Now, of course, I've never curled a day in my life, John, and of course, uh, you said that you have in the past. You get up by these uh, big margins and you, how hard is it, you know, all of a sudden to maybe, you know, maybe take the foot off the pedal and start to make little mistakes? Because it's sport, it doesn't matter whether you're talking curling, baseball, anything like that. You get into one of these situations where the game is sort of out of hand all of a sudden you take the foot off the pedal just for a bit and you start to make careless mistakes and then all of a sudden you get into habits and then you carry those habits over to a more competitive game and can't get those habits broken. Yeah, you see the the, the biggest thing that now for Team man Manual, because like you say there, they, they really have to have little goals and focus on the fu fundamentals. If you have something to aim for every time, it makes it that you can't really get off of the competitive side of it is that like it, you have to keep everything simple and, and have something to strive for and if it's as simple as make going six for six on your hits that's what you need, need to do or set a little goal for yourself I find that has been good for me because you really try to set something that you really can aim for anything. Graham Weagle here in the seventh. Sweeper's working hard on this one. Yeah, race is right out of his head. And you can see in behind, even before that comes to a stop, Adam Cox ready to go. Not wasting any time. Manuel came out to take a quick look. Did bury that one, that blue and towards the back there with that guard, but. Yeah, they're gonna go for a straight peel here. There would be the option of having a, a run back to get that stone, but if you do that, then you set yourself in the same position as where they are, but is he gonna do it? He's gonna just replace Knows it. it. Yeah, did pretty well exchange rocks there. Blue handled stones and the big question is, uh, I think I saw that stone move over a little bit to the side. If it's a little bit more open, it would make it a little bit of a challenge for a team Weagle to protect. The microphone you're hearing is from the sheet E here right beside us. Sights and sounds, of course, produced here by Chuck Calder and the TV1 crew. The sights and sounds here of the 2017 AMJ Campbell Nova Scotia Provincial Curling Championships here from the Lakeshore Curling Club, home of the Jamie Murphy Club. Of course, going to be at the Tankard here couple of weeks in Dartmouth. It actually just happens that if I remember my roster is correctly one of the members of Team Murphy he happens to be sitting right right next to us over beside our broadcast position a Paul Fleming who is the newest member of Team Murphy is a the coach for Team Ryan Abraham look happy on this side of the 
the glass right right now, but looking forward, I'm sure, to pl playing in the tankard in a few weeks in Dartmouth. Yeah, we had a little bit of a wave hello, so. see there's just a half a rock there for the Grand Weagle foursome. Not sure what they're going to do with this one here, John. Where would, if you were out there, you see the situation, where would you put this one yourself? If, honestly, based on that position, I'd probably be trying to... You honestly have to guard it, honest, if I were see, seeing that in any way there. You have to protect the stone that you have there and put some pressure on it that Team Manual can't easily take yours out. It's, again, I say about focusing on the fundamentals when you're up, you also have to really focus on the fundamentals when you're down too. Because if you're not producing the, those simple shots and focusing on making the big shots, it can sometimes mess with your strategy long I mean a really long guard there pretty good it's a good news bad news situation with that long guard it really prevents any like like if they get like a you know prevents the, the manual team for like trying to run something back because the further the distance is the harder it is to make the shot so it's okay to have it there, but sometimes long guards aren't the fringe either because you can still do like a come around sort of thing. But of course, when you're up by four, it's, uh, as you say, just you know, concentrate on trying to keep things as clean as possible and keep the house open as much as you can. I really shut down any offense here for T. Weagle here in the seventh. Skip Rocks here in the seventh. Manuel has the hammer. Thatcher Nuck and Cameron here. The front end and hold the broom Cox and call in line to skip Manuel and pushes a blue towards the back. The yellow goes towards the back 12. Deeps assessing the situation. Shot Rock is the one that's close to the G-Lie there, belonging to Manuel. So this weekend is a very busy time in junior curling around the country. There are many provincial championships taking place, not just here in Nova Scotia, but throughout the country country including uh, one of the ones being uh, in Manitoba where the winner of this men's event will face the the team Nova Scotia representative in in draw one and that is taking place at the Altona Curling Club in Altona Manitoba very early in that competition there's a lot of teams that are looking to wear the bison yellow of team Manitoba at the nationals well, that's funny you should say that. So far, Team New Brunswick, uh, Liam Martin out of the Thistle St. Andrews uh, Curling Club at the St. John, Newfoundland Labrador team, Daniel Bruce. Uh, Sauer Kaiser from the Fort Smith Curling Club in the Northwest Territories. Team New of it, of course, is David Aglukart. And Team Yukon is Joe Wallingham of the White Horse Curling Club have punched their tickets here so far to the men's portion of the championships in Shawinigan. And I believe one of the other big ones was, as well, Tyler Tardy, the defending champion out of British Columbia, coming back to defend his title, winning the BC Juniors. Eaglestone comes to a stop there, just the top four. And without any hesitation, the skip puts the broom down and now makes his way up the ice here. A four point lead here at seventh and has the hammer. So it may seem like a pretty simple shot, just 
so to speak, draw the button, they, it made those simple so challenging. It, because of how fast the ice is, it can be very challenging to read that just perfectly. So it could be the potential for a miss if he is the least bit heavy. It'll be something we'll have to watch as it comes out of his hand to see whether he's confident in his throw. His facial expressions never change whether he's up by one, up by two, or in this case, up by four. Matthew Manuel with the final stone in here in number seven. Zaturnuk, Cameron, front end. Well by that long guard there of Team Weagles. Starting to curl and dig in. And, and he'll hit the button. the button there with perfect draw weight for the single point and handshakes. And handshakes. Great game there from Matt Manuel defending champion showing why he is truly one of the best teams in this province no matter what happens in the circuit it could be a good game tomorrow if the if team manual and we go get the the wins that they could be back again here again tomorrow at four o'clock in the b final but again they'll have to get through some other teams in order to get to that game and that would be a feature game here on tv one yeah the team of Alec Cameron, Nick Zaturnuk, Adam Cox, Matthew Manuel, coached by Stu Cameron of the Mayflower Curling Club, over the Jeffrey Marr, Brett Dory, Graham Weagle, Owen Purcell, Purcell, and Anthony Purcell of the Chester Curling Club, 9-4. John, pleasure as always, my friend. We'll see you around, and hopefully we'll do another game together, and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay, enjoy the rest of your evening, everybody, and we'll see you soon. All right, so for the entire crew here in Bell 5 TV1, our producer, Chuck Calder, my name's Dan Hobson. Thank you for tuning in. So long. You've been watching the 2017 AMJ Campbell Nova Scotia Provincial Curling Championships here on Bell 5 TV1.